Good day everyone. I am April May Bogay. Um, I'm going to report my assigned topic which is the why of early childhood education. So for our topic for today is all about the why of early childhood education. So to address the why of early childhood education, we will consider the rationale supporting early childhood education and goals, of objectives, and evaluation. But in this topic, we will be more focusing on rationally supporting early childhood education. Rationally supporting early childhood education. When we say rationally, it is a brief written statement of purpose for using a particular book, using it and where it will fit in the curriculum. How we approach the education of young children depends to a great extent on what we believe children are like. Programs for preschoolers are often structured around some underlying assumptions about the nature of children. For instance, a belief that children learn actively by exploring their environment will result in a different type of early education program than one based on the idea that children learn passively by being taught specific information and skills. So in this chapter, we will examine the foundations and rationale on which early childhood education has been built. A look back, children through time. Interest in the care and education of young children goes back thousands of years. So in our, in our Western tradition is traced to ancient Greece, where the writings of philosophers such as Plato and Aristotle reflect a keen sensitivity to the needs of children and the importance to appropriate education in shaping their character. The Greeks saw human development as a, as a transformation from the imperfect state of childhood to the ideal of adulthood. Tradition including education for girls as well as boys was carried on for several hundred of years into the height of Roman times. So many of the early enlightened ideas about children were lost. However, during the Middle Ages, children became little more than property and were put to work, for instance, in the fields or tending animals, just as soon as they were big enough. So in during the Middle Ages, children became little more than property, so they were put to work, uh, for instance, some in the farm or tending animals as soon as they were big enough. So schools and formal education have virtually disappeared in Europe except in a few places, particularly in Islamic Spain, where learning was highly valued. So schools and, and formal education has virtually disappeared in Europe except, except in a few places like Islamic Spain because in Islamic Spain, um, learning was highly valued. During Dark Ages, various religious, political, and economic forces provided impetus for the move out of these Dark Ages, often improving the treatment of children but at other times exploiting them. So when we say impetus, the force or energy with which a uh, body moves and exploiting, make full use of, and desire benefit from it. Example, Martin Luther advocated public education for all children in 16th century Germany as a way of promoting religious salvation. In other parts of Europe, some social and political reformers developed ideas that focus on children and their education as one way of overcoming. So in the 18th century, as the Industrial Revolution swept both Europe and America, the economic search for cheap labor led to the abuse of many children in factories. 
such blatant exploitation also lead to reforms, eventually including universal public education and laws prohibiting child labor. So in the 18th century, kano is ang mga bata ko na dito is abuse, many children abuse in the, in the factories. So when we say blatant, it is a vulgar or offensive manner to many children. The 20th century represent an active time in the formation of early childhood education. For one thing, education for all children came to be increasingly accepted and reinforcing the idea that childhood is a separate and important period. The year 20th century is a year wherein the education was built for children. So one thing, education for all children are highly accepted and it is also considered to be um, it is also yun para sa mga bata ay tinatanggap lalong tinatanggap na nagpapatibay sa ideya na ang pagkabata ay isang hiwalay at mahalagang panahon. Education in the, in the United States in the eyes of such progressive educators as John Dewey was a training ground for democracy, a way of equalizing social inequities by imbuing children from a young age with democratic ideals. Philosophers and scientists who proclaimed the early year as especially relevant also contributed to the field. Among of, among of them is Sigmund Freud, focused unprecedented attention on earliest experiences as the formation of personality. When we say, un, when we say unprecedent, unprecedented, never done or known before. A third strand was the development of scientific methods of observation that led to the child study movement, at which grew many university, preschools, laboratory programs designed to facilitate the, the careful study of young children. So, child study movement occurred earliest in the 20th century in the United States when many universities, preschools were established to develop scientific methods for studying children. Another contribution to today's field is the notion of early childhood education as a means to social reform. So notion is a scheduled task, manage files, save documents, set reminders, keep agendas, organize their work, so Notion allows writing and testing equations in the form of blocks or in line. Finally, another change that has profoundly affected in early childhood education today is the rising need for child care arrangement. Although recent changes in the economy and family life have brought the proliferation of child care programs available today, such programs are not new. So when we say proliferation, is a rapid multiplication of parts of the increase in the number or something. During World War II, many women were required to work and needed arrangements for care of their young children. So, during World War II, a um, lot of women were required to work para to arrange the care for their young children. History and the context of each period have generally determined how children are viewed. Today's view of children is based to a greater extent on theory and research rather than on the, in, on the religious or political ideas 
that in part dictated the image of children in the past. Influential people in the history of early childhood education. Many individuals have contributed to our current view of young children and their care of education. So now, let us now meet some of the people who have contributed to our views, particularly as this relate to the early years. So first, we have Jean Jacques Rousseau, 1712 to 1778. According to Rousseau, young children are, in are innately pure and noble. But they need to be protected from the evil influences of society to maintain this goodness. So according to Rousseau, um, young are some um, young children are pure and noble, but they need to be protected from many evil influences in the society to maintain the goodness. Children have a unique nature that needs to be nurtured and protected. We also recognize the needs to provide an appropriate environment for young children in which their development can be, can be maximized. So many children have their own uniqueness of nature that needs to be nurtured and protected. So we, all, we also recognize the things that needs to be, that needs to provide an appropriate environment for young children so in which the in which their development can be maximized. Second, we have Johann Pestalozzi, 1746 to 1827. He stressed the important role of the mother in children's earliest year. The importance of recognizing individual differences among children and the relevance of children's self-activity rather than the role of the role as the basis of learning. So the importance of recognizing individual differences among the children and relevance of children's self-activity rather than the role as the basis of learning. First, to actually teach young children of preschool age, making the beginning of the kindergarten movement. So, according to Johan Pistolozzi, the first thing to actually teach young children at first school age is making the beginning of kindergarten movement. So, next we have Friedrich Froebel, 1782-1852. Rubel was one of the visitors at Pestalozzi's school. He greatly admired Pestalozzi's skills but was concerned over his inability to articulate these methods. So, Rubel was one of the visitors kang Pestalozzi's school. So, he, he admired Pestalozzi's about of his skills but was concerned over his inability sa pag articulate sa methods. So Fribble believe in the interrelatedness of nature and the child's development mind, developing mind. So Fribble believe in the interrelated of nature and the children's developing minds. He also advocated that education should Harmonize with the child's inner development, recognizing that children are in different stages at various ages. So, through uh, Froebold advocated that education should harmonize with the child's inner development, to recognizing that children are in different stages at various ages. Stress the important role of play in young children's develop, not merely as a preparation for adult work. So, Frubel stress the important role of playing in young children's development, but not merely as a preparation for adult work. He is far credited with developing blocks, now a standard early childhood material. 
His programs were centered on play and sensory awareness, art activities, games, finger plays, songs, blocks, stories, and crafts. So, Froval credited with developing with of his skills developing the blocks now a standard early education early childhood material so he is centered on play and sensory awareness so the art activities games finger plays songs blocks stories and crafts So, next we have Maria Montessori, 1870-1952, was the first woman to become a medical doctor in Italy. Her psychiatric interest led, to her, led her to work with related children. She felt that their problems were educational more than medical. So, Maria Montessori was the first woman to became the to become a medical doctor in Italy. So her psychiatric and uh, his so her psychiatric interest led her to war with related children because she felt that the needs of children is uh, the problem of children is more on educational than medical. Casa di Bambini or what or children's house, the opportunity to explore her teaching method with normal education. So Casa di Bambini is a children's house, the opportunity of many children to explore her teaching method to normal children. She was particularly impressed with the great capacity of children to learn so much during the first few years of life. So Maria Montessori was impressed with the great capacity of children to learn so much during the first few years of life. So Maria Montessori, she called this capacity the absorbent mind and the logs to a sponge soaking up liquid. So, Maria Montessori's term to describe the capacity of young children to learn a great deal during early years. Sensitivity period, times when children are most receptive to observing specific learning. So, sensitive periods, Maria Montessori terms describing the times when children are most receptive to observing specific, specific learning. Prefer, prepared environment to describe this much of the right material such as the stages of development. Sensory discrimination, matching and sorting by size, shape, sound, color, smell, or other dimensions. Children learn practical Practical skills such as polishing shoes or sitting in table. So, um, children learn practical skills on how to polish shoes or on how to setting the table in table. Advanced materials were aimed at teaching reading, in aim at teaching reading, writing, and math skills through hands-on manipulation. So the advanced materials were aimed at teaching like reading, writing, and math skills through a hands-on manipulation. Particularly, her self-correcting materials and strong sense of respect for children have had an enduring impact on early childhood education. So Maria Montessori, particularly her self-correcting materials and strong sense of respect for children, have enjoyed impact on early education. Influential theories of child development. A human development theory is a way of describing what happens as individuals move from infancy 
through adulthood. Identifying significant events commonly experienced by all people and explaining why changes occur as they do. So the first influential theorist of development we have Eric Erikson in 1902 to 1994. So Eric Erikson, beginning his career in the early decades of this century in, in Central Europe. So the beginning of career, uh, the beginning career of Eric Erikson was er in early decades and the century in Central Europe. Erikson refined aspects of Freud's theory into his psychosocial theory. So yes, Eric. So yes, Eric Erikson is a psy, is a psychosocial theory. Has a psychosocial theory. So each stages of development is defined by a conflict, which leads to opportunities for personal growth. So these conflicts, in addition to cent, so, so centering on the persons alone also revolve around relationship with others. Erikson's was the first theory that spanned both childhood and adulthood through what they considered eight universal stages. So the first four are particularly important because they describe significant tasks that occur in the life of the infant and young child. So we will so we will focus on those four in more detail. So first stage we have trust versus mistrust. So age is from birth to eighteen months. Conflict, trust versus mistrust. Relationship, relationship, mother, strength, hopes. Question, can I trust the world? K event bidding. So it's in trust versus mistrust. The, ba the basic theme of infancy is the development of trust. This comes about when children's needs for food, warmth, sleep, and nurturing are met consistently and predictably. This stage involves around the importance of feeding. Although Erickson incorporates all aspects of the baby's existence, including sleep and elimination. In this foundation, the helpless infant must rely on the caregiver to provide satisfaction of needs. When children are not cared for adequately, they develop a sense of mistrust in others and in themselves, and they move to future stages by seeing the world as threatening, unpredictable, and hostile. So, in trust versus mistrust, for example, um, in trust, when the baby wants to drink milk or he wants attention from your parents, he wants warm hug, that is mistrust. And when you say mistrust, um, when the children ask um, he wants to drink milk but wala gi paminaw sa caregiver or sa mother. Another example is that in mystery and in other example in mysteries is that when the baby want attention from the mother or the caregiver pero wala mahatag ang attention next stage number two we have autonomy versus shame and doubt so age 18 months to three years conflict autonomy versus shame Relationship, parents, strength, will. Question, it is okay to be me? King event, toilet training.
So, toddlers begin to assert their growing motor, language, and cognitive abilities by trying to become more independent. So, the second, the second stage of development described by Eric Erickson occurring during the second year of life in which toddlers assert their growing motor language and cognitive abilities by trying to become more independent. So, in the autonomy versus shame and doubt, it is the stage where this is the me do it stage where a for example we might observe a padding sense of autonomy in a two year two year old child who wants to cho choose her clothes and dress herself stage three we have initiative versus guilt age three years to six years conflict initiative versus guilt relationship family strength purpose the question is, is it okay for me to do, move, or uh, and act? Okay, event and dependence. So, initiative versus guilt. Preschoolers' social and physical world expands dramatically and they are and they are full of curiosity and desire to try new activities alone as well as cooperatively with peers. At this age, children enjoy imitating adults, a way of learning about and incorporating adult rules and expectations. Children also acquire the understanding of male and female roles through the subtitle through the subtitle expectations expectations of the pre of the parent of the opposite sex if children receive no godliness or if they are not allowed to explore satisfy their curiosity and try new ventures they will develop a sense of guilt and failure thus in the early childhood setting it is important to allow children to initi initiate and try out a variety of experiences and activities and to provide appropriate guidance within which children can learn their roles and expectations of society. So, an initiative. Uh, so, an example of initiative is um na kanang gusto nila try lang curiosity about sa mga new activities like. Basta ang initiative is katong gusto nila ma-try ang um, ma-experience ang mga new activities or mga curiosity nga na silang mind. And then ang sa guilt, ma ma ang guilt is wherein ang ilang curiosity and ilang kansa, ang ilang curiosity is dili nila ma-experience. Next stage, we have industry versus inferiority. Age, 6 years to 12 years. Conflict, industry versus inferiority. Relationship, neighbors, schools. Strength, competence, question. Can I make it in the world of people and things? Gay event, school. So, industry versus inferiority. By the end of the preschool three years, children begin to focus on the development of competence. They like to plan, carry out, and complete projects. Unlike younger preschoolers who are more concerned with the exploratory process of their activities. This period is particularly important in the development of habits of workmanship, persistence, greater understanding of social rules, and citizenship. Children who do not develop an adequate sense of industry will settle for medio
so next influential theory theory is John Piaget an 1896 to 1980. Piaget's cognitive developmental theory presents a complex picture of how children's intelligence and thinking abilities emerge. So in cognitive developmental theory, the theory formulated by uh, John Piaget that focuses on how children's intelligence and thinking abilities emerge through distinct stages. Adaptation is involved any time new information or a new experience occur. Adaptation is a process that occur any time new information or a new experience occur. So adaptation is involved any time new um, information or a new experience. When something new presents itself, however, the existent mental structure is upset, put into this disequilibrium because this new information or, or experience does not exactly fit into the old structure. So this equilibrium, according to John Piaget, the lack of balanced experience when existing mental structures and new experience do not fit exactly. So to return the balance or equilibrium, adaptation takes place through the complementary process of assimilation and accommodation. So equilibrium, the state of balance each person seeks Six between six between existing mental structures and new experiences. So assimilation occurs when the person tries to make the new information or experience fit into an existing concept of or a schema. Assimilation, one form of adaptation which takes place when a person tries to make new information or a new experience fit into existing concept. Accommodation takes place when the scheme is modified or a new concept is information is formed to incorporate the new information or experience. Accommodation which takes place when an existing concept is modified or a new concept is formed to incorporate new information or a new experience. Organization is a process that is complementary to adaptation. Organization, the mental process by which a person's organized experience information in relation to each other. Schemata are concepts or mental representations of experience. As a stage theorist, Piaget conceived of qualita qualitatively different characteristics and accomplishments in cognitive ability during various stages of development. By the age 2, however, a distinctly new ability emerged the ability for mental representation of objects even though they are not present in the immediate environment. So representation, the ability to depict an object So, reasoning is not yet logical, although by about seven years, children begin to apply logical thinking to, to concrete problems. So, so, the reasoning is not yet logical, although about, the, about seven years, children be begin to apply logical thinking to concrete, to concrete problems. Finally, by adolescence, 
The young person may be able to apply logic and abstract thinking to a wide range of problems. So in adolescence, the young person can be able to apply logic and abstract thinking to a wide range of problems. So Piaget period of cognitive development, you have sensory motor, preparational, concrete operation, formal operations. So in sensory motor age 0 to 2 years, the infant explores the world through a direct sensory and motor con contact, object permanence and separation anxiety developed during this stage. So, the, inf the infant can explore the world through the direct sensory and motor contact. So, pre-operational age 2 to 7 years, the child uses symbols such words and images to represent objects but does not reason logically. The child also has the ability to pretend during, during this stage the child is centric egocentric so in preparational children use symbols and like words and images to represent objects but that's not the reason to be logically the child also has the ability to pretend so in concrete operations age 7 to 11 years the child can think can think logically about concrete objects and can thus add and subtract. The child also understands conversation. So in concrete operations, the child can think logically about the concrete objects and can also add and subtract. And also child and also child can understand the conversation with can the conversation. So, formal operations, age 11 to 15 years. The adolescents can reason abstractly and think in hypothetical terms. So, next So next influential theories we have B. F. Skinner, 1904-1990. An alternative view is that children are not shaped by internal forces about, but shaped by internal forces but rather by external ones, specifically those emanating from the environment. So, behaviorism is based on this viewpoint. According to B.F. Skinner, that behavior is shaped by environmental forces, specifically in response to reward and punishment. Behavior modification, which operates on the underlying principle that behavior can be changed or modified by manipulating the environment. Behavior modification, the systematic application of principles of reinforcement to modify behavior. Skinner emphasized that almost all behavior is learned through experiences. So according to Biff Skinner, um, Skinner emphasized that almost all the behavior is learned through the experiences. <coughs> 